part of this strategy is not only just going on monologues, it seems, from the stand somewhat, but also not even answering the questions, which is what has brought about this admonishment from the judge. Let me bring in David Challey and CNN's political director on this. And here's a quote for you, David, just showing, as Kristen was saying, how the legal and the political, uh, in terms of the campaign, they've become the same thing. Here's the quote from Trump. I'm sure the judge will rule against me because he always rules against me, says Trump. That sounds very familiar from what we've heard from the campaign trail. You hear it all the time in the campaign trail. And the judge, of course, as you guys noted earlier, said that's not factually true uh, to Donald Trump, who was on the stand there. Uh, you can't separate these two. This is uh, the dominant frontrunner for the Republican nomination and the currently leading candidate to be elected president uh, next year, uh, running against the incumbent uh, Joe Biden, according to recent polls. And, and, and yet he finds himself on this day in this courtroom, in this historic nature. And guys, I don't think it is uh, despite uh, his legal challenges that he is still maintaining this lead. I think it is in part because of them. We have seen Donald Trump be able to utilize his legal peril, his legal challenges as a fortifying force for Republicans. And that is what we see in all the public data out there, which is this fortified world of Republicans around Trump, both in the primary context and how that benefits him in a general election context, whereas uh, Joe Biden does not have that fortified force among Democrats. So these trials are playing directly into uh, his hands here. Absolutely. David, stand by. Let's get back out to the courthouse. Paula Reed's got some more detail from inside. What's happening? This is getting pretty heated. Uh, the judge asking Trump's lawyer, quote, can you control your client? This is not a political rally. This coming from our colleagues who are inside the courtroom watching this live. Uh, the judge forcing Trump's lawyer, Chris Kais, to talk to the former president. The former president, uh, we're reading here, apparently waved his arms uh, at any suggestion of taking a 10-minute break. He is sitting back in his chair, we're told, just pursing his lips in that sort of classic Trump smile. Uh, Trump's lawyer is assuring the judge that their client, quote, understands the rules. The judge shot back and said, well, he doesn't abide by them. Now, apparently, they're back into questioning, but this is getting pretty heated. If there was any question about whether the former president could remain uh, composed on the stand, refrain from attacking uh, prosecutors, uh, the judge. Well, it's pretty clear. Uh, he and the judge sort of getting into it here. The judge is especially frustrated with Trump's uh, inability to focus and his lack of brevity. I mean, something that we've all seen many times with the former president. But when you're on the witness stand, it's different. This is not social media. This is not a campaign rally. This is the judge's courtroom, and he has repeatedly asked the former president not to engage in, quote, speeches or essays. It looks like they're continuing with questioning. They're not taking a break. And the former president's lawyer assuring the judge that his client understands the rules. All right, Paula, keep us posted because this is, as you said, getting interesting and getting heated and may come to a head soon. Ellie Honig, you know, this is now several times the judge has gone back and asking Trump's attorney, Christopher Kies, can you control your client? Yeah, I think it's interesting, by the way, that the, uh, the judge is not directly speaking to Donald Trump, the witness, which he can do. Judges give instructions directly to witnesses all the time. What do you think is he's I think he's trying to create some separation, some distance. I think the judge does not want to make this Judge Angoran versus Donald Trump. And so that's why the, Trump, the, the judge is saying to Trump's lawyers, can you all do anything? Can you please yeah. control him? It's really important to understand the judge has fairly limited enforcement powers here. Usually the fact that there's somebody sitting up high on the bench in a black robe is more than enough to get a witness to comply, to listen. I mean, the courtroom's set up that way for a reason. But when you have a witness like this who is just dead set on it, you can admonish, you can warn, you can strike testimony, meaning take it off the record. But ultimately, that's really all that the judge can do. And so this will be an interesting dance here between the judge and Trump that 36 minutes in and it's already at a pretty high temperature. Absolutely. Well, there are some other statements that are coming out. I mean, they're, we're getting so much so quickly. I'm going to take a couple steps back to go forward because they're during questioning as well. It seems Donald Trump has hinted at what the future, the, their future defense, I guess, during this line of questioning may be. Um, this is full screen five or six just for the control room where Donald Trump says, 
um, when it comes to, he says, we're going to explain that as this trial goes along, this crazy trial goes along because we're bringing in the bankers, very big bankers. They'll explain exactly what their process is. They were not really documents that the banks paid much attention to. They looked at the deal. This kind of Jeremy Saland is with us as well. This speaks to the facts and figures that need to, that is part of this line of questioning that they're trying to have. And Donald Trump saying that he thinks that he's going to be bringing in big bankers to prove his case. I, I don't know what big bankers means, but exactly. uh, the, the, bottom, <laughs> the, 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 the bottom line here, this is playing all into the attorney general's hands. I mean, this is this is what they want. They're not here to debate politics and, and what's going to happen outside the courtroom and in an election. They're looking at the four corners of that courtroom and whether they can prove their case. And, and going on tirades and talking about big bankers and going after the judge does nothing for his credibility, does nothing to dispute the allegations, does not bring new facts and, and evidence into play. So all this really hurts Donald Trump. And I, you don't bring me on to be a, a mental health professional, but I, I do wonder whether or not the former president understands the gravity of, of what he's doing. And I think also at the same time, he is more afraid of this case because he thinks that the other matters, he's never going to see a day in jail and it doesn't really matter. This is his name. This is his future. But he's, he's going off the rails from what we're hearing about inside the courtroom. All right, let's get back to uh, the courthouse steps. Caitlin Collin is there, I, I, and I understand, Caitlin, um, things have not improved inside the courtroom. Because they want to come to her. <laughs> no, they haven't, and it's not really that surprising, but so much of it is how this is proceeding with Trump being uh, asked these questions, not giving a direct answer, certainly not in the judge's estimation of what's happening there, and he is getting incredibly frustrated. He just uh, removed some of Trump's comments from the records where Trump was bragging about how much cash he had. The judge uh, essentially having uh, groaning here, saying that he is not only being filibustered by the witness, the former president who is on the stand right now, but also he is saying by Chris Kyes. Trump's attorney who is in the room and the judge is getting uh, incredibly frustrated. He has now admonished Trump in the middle of his statement. Now that has happened, I believe, five to six times. Trump has only been inside that courtroom for about 39 minutes here. And I think that is what's notable here is just how quickly this has devolved into a bit of a chaotic situation. What we do know is that the prosecutors don't seem to be getting into the middle of this of what's happening between the judge and Trump and Trump's attorney and instead are continuing with the questioning. I think one really interesting aspect of this is obviously What's at the heart of this is that Trump overvalued and inflated his assets to get more favorable terms on his loans. Trump is essentially trying to claim that actually these properties were undervalued and that sometimes he questioned the values of what was on these, these statements, these financial statements, saying that it was actually less than what he thought it should be. That is not what the judge has already found here. They've already found him liable for fraud. The question is how much he has to pay in damages, and he seems to be arguing something different. Of course, the judge is also what matters here. The judge getting frustrated with Trump's questioning. There's no jury inside that room, John and Kate. It is up to the judge here. He was already off on bad terms with the judge, and now it does not seem to be like uh, the former president is trying to get on his good side in any shape or form.